Gary Black also made a whole bunch of provisions. He reduced 2024 deliveries to 1.8 million, so flat year-over-year -year growth. Uh, down from 2 million. He reduced his 2024 gross margin projections down to 15.7%. And uh, for 2030, he reduced gross margins down to 21%. He reduced his EPS estimates, but he increased FSD revenue to assume 10% of current 30 day trials renewed at $200 a month and long term take rates of 15%. He still assumes a $25,000 EV launches in 2026 and accounts for 50% of 2030 volumes. But uh, how Elon Musk is talking, how the Tesla team is talking, I'm not sure about the next generation vehicle at the moment. Uh, I think we will find out what's going to happen with it on August 8th. And maybe the Tesla team itself doesn't really quite fully know what they are going to prioritize, the robotaxi or the next generation vehicle. I think because they are no longer compete constrained. Right now they are prioritizing Robotaxi and by August it will be probably very clear. Is this the right move or do we need to go back on prioritizing the compact vehicle? I don't have the new FSD version that just came out yet but I'm looking forward to testing it and I will be watching all of these new videos and I will try to see what the improvements are. If the improvements suddenly stop a few months from now then yeah FSD progress would stall basically and that would not be great but looking at chat gpt uh, using chat gpt 3 was fine then 3.5 came out I was like whoa this is quite a bit better it's actually useful in many regards and chat gpt 4 it's actually really useful and they were able to make these improvements fast because you can use all of internet's data and tesla right now it's getting a lot of data and Tesla can increase the gathering of data, I think, exponentially if Tesla really wants to do so. So compute is no longer the constraint. What is the constraint now, by the way? What is it? Anyway, Gary continues, my 2030 deliveries remain at 8.8 .8 million. And he predicts that in 2030, Tesla stock will be at $540 per share. So you discount that to today at 13.6% and you get $250, uh, which is his 12-month Tesla stock price target. There's a Tesla bear that's criticizing Gary Black, but I, I will say this, you guys, um, I don't include this account in my videos because if you think that Gordon Johnson is a bit mm, questionable, <laughs> he takes it to a whole new level. But anyway, he asked, why would 2025 deliveries rise by 19% year over year or 350,000 units if there are no new models? Gary explains, number one, Model 3 refreshed won't be capacity constrained anymore. And number two, Cybertruck production will be ramped up at Austin. So plus 100,000 units. And you have seen that Cybertruck interest chart Clearly, it's going up. The hype is not dying down. It's growing. And then he predicts that Tesla will start advertising to attract current ICE buyers, which will drive Model Y as the next sale. So plus 120,000 units. I assume no $25,000 vehicle sales until 2026, which includes both the compact or the robot taxi. Oh, second half of March saw an increase in short positions of Tesla stock with now 107 million short interest number of shares see below table from nasdaq website and right now the short interest still remains higher it takes again a bit more than one day to cover the shores as the average daily share of volume has decreased during that fortnight by nearly 20 percent still a very small number only 3.37 percent of all shares about four percent of the float are short interest we will know mid-may who increased their short positions as they have to disclose uh, their positions. Tesla made a new post about that new Model Y long range rear wheel drive in Europe. Maximum range that allows you to commute all week without charging at an even more accessible price. So the price is lower because it has one less motor. Lowest cost per kilometer in the electric SUV market. It's not available in every single country in Europe, but in most, yes, it is available. Oh, wow. Look at the range difference. So with the uh, Rear wheel drive, you get 600 kilometers now with the all wheel drive option, 533 kilometers. So that's more than 10%. And it's still pretty fast 5.9 seconds, 0 to 60 miles per hour instead of 5 seconds. Uh, anything under 7 seconds, 
I like. And the price is significantly cheaper. The all-wheel drive is 55,000 euros and this one is only 49. You know what? If I'm price conscious, if I don't live in the hills, uh... I think this is the best value. James says this will support volume at the expense of average selling price better than price cuts, however. So this is a bit of a price cut. Yeah, I think unless I really had to get all wheel drive, I'm going with, with that longer range rear wheel drive option. Ironically, the slower car is gonna get to you to your final destination quicker if you do go on a pretty lengthy road trip.